It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Folks, it's been a year since I talked to my good friend Oscar and Dustin from Kyocera. And it was last year at Print United in Atlanta. Here we are at Print United in Vegas, 2025. The Kyocera Task Alpha 15,000C is breaking records. We're gonna hear about a new IDC report. So without any further ado, let's have a conversation. I wanna start with Oscar. How are you doing, man? It's been a year. Doing great, thank you very much for coming to our booth. Well, I gotta say, Oscar, you know, you got this 15,000 Task Alpha breaking records. Tell us a little bit about this IDC report that just came out because I know it's worth bragging about. It. Well, we're very proud about it. I mean, IDC just presented the last quarter results and we are number one in the uh, in-jet catch seat market, 34% market share. So if you think about what we were three years ago when we launched the product and where we are today, I think that it speaks volumes about uh, the results of this technology and we cannot be more happy about it. So. So let me just clarify, so if it's a 34% growth, that would be for that year's placement. Well, 34% market share. Market share for that year's placement. Yeah, right? for yeah. this last quarter uh, uh, placement. So altogether in the US right now, we have more than 320 units placed. Awesome. And again, that has been in three years starting from nothing. We just didn't have any, any kind of production uh, background or experience. So I think that uh, we did something that is, was challenging to try to start something that was not our core business. And I think that thanks to our dealers, to our customers, we're in a position that, honestly speaking, I never thought that we were going to be today. So. Well, I would say this, and I, I think I might even said it in one of my episodes, but when Kia Sarah came into the inkjet business, they went where the future was, which is inkjet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yes. could have they could have came into cut sheet production with laser. They didn't, they went with inkjet, and now we're seeing the whole inkjet talk. I started the inkjet revolution, and you guys were forefront on that. Dustin, it's been a year trying to develop this program. Sure. So I'm sure you've had your issues. Or is, is it getting better? Is it getting a little bit easier for you? Oh, yeah, I think, you know, what Oscar mentioned about the market share, that, that's really significant. So it's, you know, one of the things that I've said to our team and our marketing partners is, is we have to continue to drive awareness and consideration of our product. We are still a relatively new entrant, but, you know, being able to say your number one market share, one out of three customers are making a decision to buy a cut sheet inkjet press are choosing the Task Alpha is pretty significant. So. That, you know, that's probably the most notable thing for us, but of course there's you know, the daily challenges of you know, working with customers and dealers to identify the right applications, the right customer environments, but we're learning and, and they're learning along with us. Let me ask you about the dealer selling this, and I might have talked about this last year, but I want a little clarification. Can dealers just sign up and sell the Task Alpha 15,000C? Do you have any kind of pre-qualifications? So yeah, I mean, certainly we, we look at it as an opportunity for them to enter the market. We want to partner with them, but they got to have certain qualifications. You know, produ being in production is, is probably the biggest qualification. But then we ask them to train service technicians to make sure they do that, the sales training, they go through that process. And then it gives them the opportunity to go out and engage the market and, and you know, test test their customer base. And, you know, what we see more and more of is, is dealers who might not think they can enter Inkjet, um, you know, looking at their customer base and seeing uh, customers that actually are entering into Inkjet and hadn't even thought about them as, as, a, as a production partner. Yeah, I think Ray, to, to, be, to be quite totally transparent about that, I think a dealer without any kind of production experience is very difficult to get into that yeah. market, really difficult. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it, it is true. I mean, I mean, we have some cases, but it's challenging. But for a dealer with any production experience, toner-based experience, moving into inject is such an easy transition because the reliability and the technical complexity of the products are much lower than toner. So it's a very easy transition uh, for them. But again, you need to have some experience into production. In the sales field, yeah. so the old, I mean, we still hear some of these, I just call them dinosaurs, I guess, if you will. They probably don't work at Kia Sierra but where they talk about how inkjet doesn't give the quality that laser does and all this kind of nonsense. Has that pretty much gone away? So, I mean, we have two devices, the 15,000C that's in the market today and the 55,000, which we'll be launching in the, you know, the coming months, you know, probably early 2025. Um, and, and that really eliminates it. That's going to gloss coated papers, 1200 DPI. Quality is, is equivalent to toner, maybe superior in some aspects. Um, so it's, it's right there along with it. The 15,000 is, is, I would say, a, you know, a, a notch below, but built for purpose. It does some things extremely well. Transactional bills and statements. Uh, we see a, a lot of uptake in educational institutions where they're producing workbooks and course books and textbooks 
Um, so, for, you know, the, it serves different markets very well with the different technologies that are out there. And what we see with dealers and customers is they're looking to adopt the technology to address the applications they're doing on oftentimes legacy toner, and they know the future is inkjet. So they're able to choose one of our products to focus in on to pave their path to the future. I believe this, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but the market determines what we sell or what they buy. So if we're going to go to inkjet for the benefit of the market end user, because it is a benefit, less service, less seed, all that stuff. So isn't the marketplace going to come up with applications that are geared around inkjet versus where before when we were in a laser world, they might have had applications that were geared around laser. But if they can benefit truly from inkjet technology, won't they just in turn help their customers understand that and the productions they're doing for them? And that's, that's why I think we're having inkjet I think it's revolution. some and some. Yeah. I mean, so what I often refer to is, is customers who are choosing to make an inkjet investment today, usually they have, a, they have a significant number of enabling applications that they move over the first day, week, month that they're getting a return immediately on it. And we are pretty pretty good at installing equipment and getting customers ramped up the volume so they're getting a payback immediately on the device. And then the evolution happens. They look for other applications. Now they see the benefits of it and they go out and they sell to, to customers that, that where they didn't have the capabilities before, maybe the economics, they go out and they look for more customers to sell into that technology to use the uh, capacity that they have on the device. A couple of years in, is there a particular vertical particular application that seems to be, you know, 70% of the business, or is it all over the place? No, I mean, it is, it's all over the place, yeah. but when I say it's all over the place, it's not all over the place. Yeah. There's very specific vertical market segments where I would say there's, there's real true value with the applications. So traditionally, bills and statements, so the transactional industry, direct mail, we see more and more direct mail applications, a lot of high volume users doing three million a month on the task alpha. 3 million a month on a, a cut sheet device is mm -hmm. insanely high. But what, where we're seeing a lot more adoption through both direct and through dealers is uh, the educational institutions. Universities, public schools, where there's more and more of them owning their own curriculum, producing their own curriculum as opposed to traditional textbooks. That's where the adoption really seems to be picking up. How many dealers represent 80% of your volume on the task alpha? Oh, it's just a handful. It's a handful, probably five to six, seven okay. maybe. Yeah. And how many total are playing? Uh, 40, 40 that are out there actively engaging with customers that are out there. Do you have a, will there ever be a time, and this is for you, Oscar, this is probably a tough question, but I, I mean, you might not want to answer it. But if we get, if we have a marketplace, that it's getting a little bit oversaturated. And of course, when we're oversaturated, we can't control the pricing. So would there be a time where we might have to look at the dealers that aren't really performing and say that we need to pay attention more to the ones that are and try to shrink our market? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a natural process. I yeah. mean, a dealer who is not performing will not be in this industry yeah. anymore. Yeah. But I think what you see in this, in, in this industry is that you see many different ways of being successful. I think that uh, you go to visit a dealer that they are very, um, uh, very vocal about not going into IT and they are very successful, and then you go to a different, different dealer that they are very much into IT and they're successful as well. So I think that everybody has to find a way of being successful, could be IT, could be software, could be production, uh, could be office space, and uh, I think that you have to find your place, and if you don't find it, of course, the market will kick you out of the market. I think that's not something that depends on us. I think it's a natural evolution, and it's not the process that we want to do. So. Well, I think a lot of people where the fault is, is they try to add stuff on, but they don't have a business plan. <laughs> so if I'm a dealer, and, and let's say that I, I'm a qualified dealer, that I can sell this stuff, you're confident in me. Do you come in and help them really build a business plan and, and help them understand the financial impacts of it, the cost of it, and all of that? So I would say, yes, we help them with that, but I think they know their business. Okay. They, they need, oftentimes need to learn how inkjet's a little different. The service requirements are significantly less. The annuity stream's different because it's a consumption model selling ink. But really the thing that we hear consistently from dealers is just help us learn where to sell it. So that's where we're spending a, a significant amount of our time engaging with dealers is training, 
training salespeople on specific vertical market segments, applications, what the value proposition is for that vertical market segment, why they're adopting inkjet, maybe even being able to point to other reference accounts where somebody's done it and had success. That's really where we're spending the bulk of our time working with dealers is helping them to learn where to sell inkjet. Can you tell, do you have enough data, and I asked this last year, so hopefully we're a year and we got more data, but when can we get some data that where we can say that if you take out XYZ machine at this volume, and it's laser based at this application, and you put in our inkjet, this is the difference in, in, in profitability based on less service, less parts, so all the stuff that goes a, with that. That's a complex question, because mm -hmm. profitability is, is you know, profit and profitability. Mm -hmm. So you know, the economics are different on it. But um, So we have the data. Um, I think probably worth sitting down and sharing some of the data sure. that we have with you, so you can understand what it is, how you see it. But um, I think, you know, back maybe to one of your other points earlier, is, is customers who become aware of the technology and the benefits and the capabilities of it, they're the ones that are drawing the dealers to it. So they're saying, you know what, we want to learn about the inkjet technology, we know you rep, rep it. And so the customers are actually helping us to work with the dealers to identify those opportunities. And you know, pricing things, that's where we support them and make sure they're successful. Well, at Print United 2025, I don't know where it's going to be. Uh, Florida. So Florida, so we're going to have how many units more? Double. 600? Yeah, that depends on him. <laughs> Are we there? 600. Uh, how many months away is that? Um, so IDC, yeah. get ready. There's yeah. going to have to be another report yeah. done on this. You know, guys, it's always great talking to Kia Sarah. Kia Sarah is a well-disciplined company. I share that a okay. lot. You don't do things half-assed. You never have. And, you know, that the approach you took getting into production and getting into it with Inc. was a home run. I'm excited about it. I do want you to bring it downstream. And every single time I talk to you, Oscar, I'm going to ask you, I want a 1500 in a 15C. Keep on pushing, <laughs> you will get it done. <laughs> Anything you guys want to add before we end this? No, thank no, you very much. You it's uh, really much. nice that you give us this opportunity, sure. so thank you very much for your visit and your time. Well, because everybody watching me knows this, status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck there. See you all tomorrow.